I think it's appropriate also to say that Power Monday, this is, uh, welcome all of you, Power Monday has been there for over two years. This is the first session for 2023. We do this every Monday on, uh, every Monday except public holidays in Kenya. Uh, because I know we have people across the globe, but except only public holidays in Kenya, when that Monday falls on a public holiday, we don't have a session. It starts at 7.15 to 8.15. Usually people can join as early as 7 a.m. to network and just interact. And generally the mission of Power Monday is to provide a platform for sharing knowledge and inspiration for a productive week and successful living. We actually envision uh, being a, a society of dependable and timeless leaders, people with, um, uh, with integrity, people who make change, people who uh, create impact, positive impact, yeah. And uh, some of the values that we have include sharing knowledge, integrity, in service, networking, business and career support, among other things. And we have a variety of topics. So everyone is always welcome every Monday and you have no any other better place you can be. Uh, I see people who've uh, 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 been missing this for quite some time. So welcome all of you now. Going to my quote uh, for today, it's not mine, but I extracted it from, in, in relation to today's uh, topic, I extracted in, it from one of my best books. It's called uh, uh, As a Man Thinketh by James Allen. So mm -hmm. the quote goes, cherish your visions, cherish your ideals, cherish the music that stars in your heart, the beauty that forms in your mind, the loveliness that drapes your purest thoughts. For out of them will grow all delightful conditions, all heavenly environment. Of this, if you but remain true to them, your world will at last be built. James Allen. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Octenopal Peter. Nancy Mara, on to you. Uh, we're doing a poem on um, It's a New Year. Open and let me in. Hello, New Year. Open and let me in. I am a little New Year on the know. Here I come tripping it over the snow, shaking my bells with a merry din. So open your doors and let me in. I am the 2023. Presents I bring for each and all, big fox, little fox, short and tall. Each one from the treasure may win. So open your doors and let me in. Some shall have silver and some shall have gold. Some shall have new clothes and some shall have old. Some shall have brass, some shall have tin. So open your doors and let me in. Some shall have water and some shall have milk. Some shall have satin and some shall have silk, but each from me a present for a win. So open your doors and let me in. Behold bounties I bring, behold blessings I bring. So open your doors and let me in. Happy 2023, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nancy. Open your doors and let 2023 in. So guys, our speaker for today, <laughs> our speaker for today is a friend of mine and her name is Sandra. Sandra and I met in 2020. Oh, okay, we should be celebrating our anniversary soon. 2019 actually. 2019. <laughs> and yes. it's amazing how you meet someone and you just click. Um, I think of all the people I've met in this certain forum that we met, she's one of those people that I have remained into contact with. And so Sandra is, a, is passionate about self-development and living your best life, like OPP says, eh? 
living your best life. She's an entrepreneur and a runaway commercial model. So anyone here who wants to model, anyone here who has a niece, a nephew, a sister who wants to be a model, she's the plug, by the way. And she has been doing events for the last three years. At first, it started as a hobby. Then last year, she decided to do it professionally, and the journey has been amazing. Now, I'll add this on Sandra's profile. Sandra is this one person who decides, I want to write a book, and that book will be will be finished by April 1st. And trust you me, guys, April 1st, that book will be done, done, done. <laughs> and again, she is this one person who idea pops in her mind like this. She'll be sitting down, you'll be talking, and she's like, no, well, how about this? No, well, how about this? So yeah. that is our speaker for today. I don't want to go any further to introduce her. Sandra Karibu Sana. Thank you, guys. Can you hear me, everyone, first of all? Yes, uh, I can yes, hear I can. you on my, yes, on my own. Yeah. Yes, yes, I can. Yes, we can. Thank you so much, first of all, for having me. I've been waiting for this moment forever. Finally, I am here. <laughs> and um, it's a pleasure. Um, Nala told me about your group, the way you meet up and you talk about different things. And I'm very passionate about self-development and people living in their dreams and just changing one person's life. So um, how I got into you was I got into a very difficult situation at the time in my life where I got really depressed and I was in my darkest moment. You know, like for sure, everyone is usually, there's that point in your life, like it's the darkest moment and it was not during Corona. It was like way before I went through a difficult situation and I was not seeing light. Like literally, I would sit in my room, not want to get out. I would be called for jobs. I would give out the jobs to my friends. I would actually, I just didn't want to go out completely. So it comes to a point in your life when you know, okay, I am going downhill because I even tried killing myself at some point. And I remember when I was trying to drive under a lorry, a lady who was driving beside me, I think she noticed, or maybe, I don't know, I usually say that she's my angel because the way she just came in and she was insisting for me not to drive under the lorry because I was really adamant. I was driving and I was driving and I was driving and I had the goal of going under the lorry and I finished everything because I knew for sure I would just kill myself. I would not kill the, the driver of the lorry because I would go under it and not go on the other side, like at the front. So I had thought about it for a long time. And um, this lady kept on honking the, the car and she was like, stop, stop. And I was looking at her, I'm still driving. I am pressing on the accelerator. I am going and going and going and going. And she's still honking and she's coming on my side. She's behind me. She went on my side on the, on the left side. and she kept on doing it and doing it and doing it. Then at some point, like there was a bit of traffic. So when there was a bit of traffic, she actually swapped me out of the road. She literally swapped me out of the road. And when I went out of the road, she got out of her car, came running towards my car and opened the door. And she asked me, why do you want to kill yourself? And at some point, I was wondering, how did this woman know that I wanted to kill myself? And I just looked at her and I just started crying. I was in my pajamas. Yes, I was not even dressing up. I was not doing any, anything like, I, I would just take a shower and then go back to my night, night dress, basically. So I was in my pajamas and I was just looking at her and I'm like, what, what's your business? Like, mind your business. I don't want anything to do with you. Like, you go about your day and I'll go about, about my day, whatever the case is. And she told me something very important. She told me, uh, do you think it's right for you to take your own life and yet God has given you this life and someone else is dying somewhere else? When she told me that, I remember I broke down and I started crying. And from then on, she put me in her car and she drove me home. She asked me where I lived and she drove me home. And she told me my car will come back home. I don't know how, but she, she, she decided that my car will come. And at that point, honestly, I was like, whatever. Like, 
if the car would go, let me go. I don't really care much about it. So she drove me home. She got me into my house and I got into the house and she gave me her number and she told me I could call her anytime. But um, I went back to the house that day. I just came inside the house and I cried and I told God I am sorry for what I wanted to do. But I just need light at the end of the tunnel. Like I needed to just see something that I, I, I was purpose to do. And I remember a friend of mine called me that evening and she told me that uh, there's a therapist who I can speak to, who can help me to get out of my situation. And the therapist was very patient with me. I'm telling you patient because I would cry for a whole hour. I'm on the phone with him. He lives in Uganda, Mark you. I would be on the phone with him and I'm crying and he's just there listening. Sometimes I would call him at 3 a.m., 2 a.m. in the middle of the night. And I was wondering at some point, what is his wife thinking at this point when I'm calling this man and I am just crying? But um, he was very patient with me and he told me I should get into what I used to love doing. And I love writing. I am passionate about writing and I decided, okay, fine. Since I can't tell, I wasn't trusting anyone to tell my secrets to, I decided to put it on paper. So I started writing it down. And I would write for hours and hours and hours. And when I wrote it down, it gave me a sense of relief. So that's how I knew that, okay, this is working. And I would sometimes wake up and I would go and take breakfast, come back to the, to the bedroom, and maybe want to comb my hair. And maybe that day I would tell my sister, oh, you know what? Uh, let's go and do shopping. Because I had left literally everything for her to do. When she'd come to my room, I would just look at her. She'd talk to me and just look at her. She asked me for something, I would just look at her. I was like a walking zombie, basically. So um, when I started writing, I remembered I had watched a book. A, a book, okay, it's a book which was made into a movie. It's called The Secret by Rhonda. And I remember watching it at Oprah. And I remember Oprah saying that your mind can take you places which you've never been before. And I remember saying that, okay, I have these dreams. I've always had these dreams of doing so many other things. Like, why am I letting this one situation ruin my life for now? I have been left into this world until now for a purpose. So why don't I try and help the same people who are in my situation or even something different to just get out of the situation? And I sat down and I wrote, down a journal. I I literally sat on and I thought, okay, what helped me get out of depression? And I started writing it. Like um, me waking up in the morning saying what I was grateful for helped me a lot. Me waking up in the morning and planning for the week. Like I would decide days on a Monday, right? I would decide, okay, I want to maybe go for three classes. I would make sure to find so when I what time is the class, what I do I wake up, what I what I do I prepare myself. Okay, how do I get to class? The nitty gritty. Trust me, um when you're in depression, some things you take for granted, some things like waking up and just going and doing uh, something as simple as just taking tea. It would look like a mountain hill. So when you're in that situation, it look it would look like a mountain hill. You don't have the motivation. You don't even have the urge to eat. You might be hungry, but you think it's whatever. Like it's not that important. I will eat later on. You're not thinking about your health at all. So, uh, I started go. I started writing things down. So I would write a list of things that I was grateful for. I would write what I wanted to do within the week. And then I would break them down into pieces. Like maybe if I wanted to see the therapist, like a certain time between 2 to 4 p.m., I would decide I want to see maybe twice. Some, some weeks were a bit difficult, so maybe I would do it twice. Some weeks were slightly easier, I would do it twice. So I started something as simple as just planning my dates with the therapist. And I would make sure I am dressed up, I look presentable enough, to just have my my therapist, uh, for me and my therapist to just have the talk. And it made things slightly easier, honestly. 
And uh, I remember my therapist asking me, so how many jobs have you booked this week? And I told him, well, I have been canceling jobs. I don't think anyone would actually hire me at this point. So he told me, since no one can hire you, how about you create something for yourself? And my first thing came to my mind was, for me to create something that is helping me get out of the situation I was in at that time. So I decided, okay, I will create this book and I will try and find someone who can actually make for me this book and then sell it commercially. Actually, at first, I started giving it out to friends and family to just see what their outlook was on the book. And uh, I remember when I first gave my mother, my mother told me, oh, this is what you've been doing. And I was like, what are you talking about? And she told me, I've been seeing the, the pictures that you've been putting on your wall, like the, the, the magazine you want, you want to be part of and all that. And I was like, ah, you might be surprised at what people are seeing. So this is what I had put. Are you guys seeing that picture in the middle? With the purple hair? Yes, I can see it. Yes. So I wanted to be in the, the face of our cover magazine and not Kenyan. I had done so many Kenyan magazines. Like I wanted something challenging. So I wanted something either internationally or continent wise. And I remember um, the lady whom I had met, I think in 2017. And this lady we met, we spoke and she just disappeared. Then coincidentally, she reached out to me and she told me she's the founder of Asante Africa magazine. Asante Africa magazine is a South African based magazine. And she wanted me to be the face of the magazine. And I remember calling my therapist and I told him, you know what? I got the opportunity. I'm going to be the face of Asante magazine. And he, he told me, okay, fine, do it. I remember when I was going to do my photo shoot for the face of that magazine, I was so nervous. I hadn't done a full out photo shoot for almost eight months, eight months, a good eight months. So when I was behind the lens and I remember seeing the light and everyone like taking pictures, my, my designer was there, makeup artist, the jewelry person, um, the photographer, the videographer, everyone was there. I remember looking at them and I started getting nervous. And mark you, I had done modeling for close to seven years plus. I have never, ever been shy because of the cameras. So I was wondering what is happening. And I remember I just told my, my photographer, give me two minutes and just uh, let me pick this phone call. I'll come back, blah, blah, blah. I went and I went to the bathroom and I remember I cried. I cried because I was so nervous. I could not do anything. But I sat down and I thought, you know what? Um, you've always wanted to do this thing. You've always wanted to achieve to be in a certain magazine. So why don't you just go ahead and do it? What's stopping you? Like, what's the barrier between you and this goal that you want to achieve? I was my own barrier. I was my own worst enemy. I was my own critique. Like, and I remember telling myself, I can't be fighting against myself. I cannot. I had to go ahead and just do it. So I finished crying and I'd spoilt my makeup. Of course, my makeup artist was wondering what's wrong with this girl. Anyway, she went ahead, put on some more makeup around my eyes and I did the magazine. So when I did it, I printed it out because I feel like this was a time in my life that actually showed me that I can do anything in my life that I put my my mind into. So that's the cover of the magazine that I did. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to commercialize this book. So I started breaking it down. Basically, if you have a big goal, just go break it down into pieces, write like what you want to do, the some aspects that people usually have to write down. And it will help you. It doesn't have to be in just one year. Most people usually think that doing a vision board, doing a life planner, doing all these things, like a goal planner, it has to be in one year. No, it can't be in one year. Okay, some can be during one year. Some can be even less than one year. Some 
can be even shorter to 20 years. It depends on what you want to achieve, basically. I won't sit here and lie to you that uh, it is easy for you to get a house within one year. It, will, it, it might not be that easy. But it is possible for you to go to Masai Mara in one year. If you sit down, write down the, the cost of how much it is to go to Masai Mara, which kind of uh, agency you're going to use to go to Masai Mara, where you're going to sleep, how long you're going to go to Masai Mara, and then you plan a date. And then you decide how much also you're going to save towards you going to Masai Mara. That is very possible. So the 12 aspects of writing a vision. First of all, is a vision is the ability to set goals and objectives and to create a mental picture of what it is that you want to achieve in your future. The future can be as in the next 20 minutes. The future can be in the next uh, three months, what you want to achieve and make it something that you would actually believe because some people actually put, oh, I want to lose 20 kgs in the next two weeks. That, that can be done, yes, but unless you kill yourself, like you'd go extremely, you go and literally sleep and wake up in the gym. That's how you can achieve the 20 kg within the two weeks. But it's usually advisable. If you want something which will last long term, it will take a little bit more time. We have to work to get what we want. That's one, one of the things I know for sure. Because uh, I believe your words make your world. If you say, I am poor, you'll forever be poor. I won't lie to you. Even if you're given a million shillings, you'll never see as if it's enough for you. You'll never think that I can actually generate this money. I can invest it and I can make two million shillings. You would never think that because your mentality and the words you're speaking in your mouth are actually what is making you poor. So the mind, first of all, it actually works with pictures as opposed to words. But also in the Bible, it's written in Habakkuk 2 and 2, write your vision and make it plain so that he who may read it can actually run with it. Which means if I decide to give Noel my book to go and read what I have written, Noel can actually capture, okay, Sandra was writing A, B, C, D. I can actually take every single step that she's written and it can actually get me to that point that Sandra wanted to be in. That's what, like you break it down into bits and pieces, basically, right? So, um, there are 12 areas, 12 aspects that most people do overlook, but I feel like it's very important. Number one is health and fitness. Health is wealth. There's no point of having so much money and then you work yourself to death. It doesn't make sense. You have to, first of all, look at how you're eating, look at your lifestyle of uh, how you're eating and how you're presenting yourself. Like, even if you would be very healthy and maybe you decide that you're drinking every day, it will come to, it will deteriorate one part of your life. So health and fitness is very important, number one. Number two, intellectual. Like, if you think about poverty, as I said, you keep on bringing poverty. Bring, bo look for books, first of all, that will actually make you a better person. Look for books that will help you in your career. Look for books that will help you in your family. Look for books. We all know our weaknesses. We don't know 100% of them, but you know like one or two or three of them. If you know you're quick to anger, look for a book that is going to help you to be more patient. If you know you don't know how to save, like at first for me, um, I used to work in the aviation industry. And if there's one thing aviators do is spend money and spend money badly. Because uh, we have had so many deaths within us. So you're thinking, 
if I don't spend my money right now, I might not live to see 30 years old, 40 years old. So why should I save that much? So you find most aviators will go out, will buy the flashiest things, they have the biggest car, they just want to show off, basically. So I knew for sure, like, you know what? It's not that deep. Like, why should I save? It's, I'm going to get more money. Basically, we, we earn, we used to earn per the hours that you would fly. So, you know, if I go out right now of the house and I'm going for an eight hour flight, I'm working for the eight flowers. Actually, I'm working when I get into the airport, two hours before the flight, when you have the briefing, we get into the flight. After the flight, two hours debriefing, I'm still earning money until I get into my room. And when I'm into my room, I'm still getting money. Why? Because I'm getting per diems. So we would get a lot of money, basically. So I remember when I left the aviation industry, that was one of my challenges. I was so used to spending money and spending money badly. I knew I had to go for financial advice from someone who genuinely knew how what to do. Because I would read books and they would talk about capital and all that. Okay, capital, yes, for a business, for you to start a business. But the nitty gritties, I didn't get that. Like, I would be like, why should I save half of what I earn? If maybe my rent is actually half of what I earn. And they actually sat down with me and I went through the course bit by bit. And I was like, oh, now that makes sense. There's no point of me living in a house where I'm paying 80,000 and I'm earning 160,000 and yet I can live in a house for 30,000. I have 160,000 that I can actually have in my bank account as in like, if I would put in my necessities and all that, maybe I would use at most maybe 100K. So 80,000 I would actually save, you know. So I learned that. So you know what your weaknesses are. Identify your weaknesses and actually find books or even audios these days that you can listen to that can actually help you intellectually. Number three, emotional. We women, people say that we are very quick to anger. <laughs> even men, some men are quick to anger. Right now, if there's one thing that suddenly is the way people are killing each other, this is emotional mostly because maybe someone spoke to the other badly or maybe they've been holding grudges and all that. Deal with your emotions and deal with, the, deal with the emotions positively. Find a positive way of dealing with the emotions, okay? Uh, so that is number three. Number four, character. You have to build your character. For me, I knew I was a very... I, I had so many ideas, but I, I didn't always want to tell everyone my ideas because some people, I would tell them, they're like, Sandra, you're thinking too big. You know, there's some people who you live with and they're like, no, you're thinking too big. Why would you think that would actually actualize in your life? That would not actualize. I have a friend of mine. He had uh, the idea of making my dawa, by the way, the, my, my dawa app. And I remember he called me up and he told me, I have this app I want to make. What do you think about it? I told him, just go for it. Because for me, I, I, I usually, I go with the mentality of, if you don't do it, someone else will do it. So I told him, just go and go ahead and do it. Look at the nitty of how to make an app, who can make it for you. Protect yourself, first of all, because it's very easy for someone to steal your idea. And I gave him the integrities and he said, okay, fine, he'll go and do it. He met up with a few software developers and unfortunately, just postponed his idea. They went ahead and they gave him a run around, basically. He gave them the down payment, they gave him a run around and they told him eventually, oh, I'm sorry, sorry, it can't actually work out. And the fact that he's a doctor, it was proven a bit difficult for him to actually have the time to start going to court and doing everything. The gentleman unfortunately went to the okay, fortunately went to the States, but unfortunately, after a month or two, my Dawa app was launched in Kenya. These people are earning by the hour using someone else's intellectual uh, property. But it shows something about their character. Some people cannot be trusted with some ideas. Uh, and that's why you should 
really learn someone's character and also learn your own character. If you know you lack in one one place, make sure that you can be able to protect yourself in one way or the other. Then spiritual. We have been tested spiritually so many times. For the people who are devout Christians, there's some people who provoke you. And we know, like especially my tattoo uh, conductors, that sometimes they can, you can give them 100 shillings and maybe the fare is 80 shillings. And they decide the way that uh, they'll give you 10 shillings or they'll tell you, I'm going to change, madam. So at some point, you tell him, so this is money, Bob. And they'll start saying, you know, as if they are looking for you. You know, they are looking for you. But you start to you sit and think, and you're like, ah, uh, this guy, I won't, I won't confront him. For me, I would definitely confront him. I won't lie to you. I would definitely confront him. By the time I'm leaving that matatu, this man has made me so angry. I've even said some things straight out of what I wanted to say. They would test me in in my space because sometimes I would fast and pray because when you're fasting, you don't necessarily have to just sit in the house. You have to go about your businesses as if nothing is happening. So maybe sometimes I'm fasting and you end up getting into a confrontation with a makanga, I'm a, just anyone, and you, you it tests you spiritually, basically. So I needed to also work on that area of my life. I wasn't strong. I wasn't um, as knowledgeable as I am right now. And I learned that not everything you see and not everything that comes your way is usually there to hurt you. Some, some things are there to build you. And it helped me to just know, you know what? God has got my back. God will fight for me in my battles. I don't need to fight every single battle, you know. And uh, the next one is loving relationship. Some of us are in relationships, some of us are not, or some of us have encountered some relationships that someone was straight up using you or you are using someone. And you knew for sure this person didn't like me or I didn't like them, but you still kept on using them. That is wrong because I feel you should, if in a relationship, you need to be committed and you need to genuinely love that person you know so loving relationship is very important not only for your partner for your neighbor for your security guard for your friend uh for just a stranger also i remember when we first got into aviation uh my instructor was telling us that uh, when you go for the first interview greet everyone and at some point, I was like, everyone, like, that is a long list. How, how do you start greeting everyone? And I didn't understand it at first. But I was like, okay, because you, you're the instructor, I'll do it. So when I got into the premises, the security guard, I'm looking for A, B, C, D place. And they would actually direct me. When I get inside, now the security guard, because we went for our first um, our first interview at Intercontinental. I remember, uh, so we got into the, the second security guard place, and that guy was a bit rude. You know, not everyone is the same. Like, madam, unafaini ni apa? Ini, ini siya imbaya sana kukuja. Awani kuna delegate wengine, tupia, piti yo saidi ingine. I was like, and he would look at me up and on and wonder, is it this girl here what I'm saying? Like, why is she getting rattled up on? Why is she, is she like reacting the same way someone else, if I would speak to them, would, would react? And I remember I knew how to bite my tongue at that time. And after that, I'd be like, and I'm just, I'm here for the interview for Qatar. I was wondering if you could, could kindly direct me. They're like, Peter, Jane Dine, no, make sure me, Mr. Moen, if I work at all. So I went on the other side where he had told me to go. When I reached there, the security guard on the other side brought me back to this guy. So I come back and I wait for the delegates to pass. And they got in. Apparently, those delegates who are actually my interviewers, who are actually coming in. 
So they got in. I was saying hello, good morning, good morning. Like to literally, there were six of them. All six of them. They got in. And uh, when they were done, I I, I got, got back to the security guard. I'm like, I'm so sorry to disturb you. I just wanted to tell you that I've been the the security guard on the other side could not allow me to go through that side, and he asked me to come back to this side. So he was like, okay, fine. India and Danny. So I got in. I sat, went to the, re- actually I went to the receptionist and I knew where I was supposed to sit. I sat there. When I was seated there, a few other people came in. So there's a lady who came in and her shoes are so dirty. And I remember asking her, like, uh, do you have a wipe to wipe your shoes because presentation is key. You need to really look good. Tie your hair. And I gave her a few pointers. I remember that lady asked me, like, you are coming for the same job. Why would you help me to look the part like it's a man eat man society it's for you i might take your slot who knows so why would you help me if anything you should have left me to say like that so that i would not be a competitor but one thing i've always learned from my mother was that if something is meant for you to be used anyway we got into the interview and uh when everyone was getting in i was still saying hi good morning hello good morning hi hi Everyone was looking at me like, this girl is so strange. But everyone else from my college was doing the same thing. So it wasn't as weird at that time. When I got in, I remember the gentleman asked me, uh, how long have you been here coming for four? And I told him, I'm sorry, I've never been a coming crew. I have studied for coming crew, but I've never been a coming crew. And I'm like, okay, fine, we are done. And I was like, huh? Oh. You're not asking me any other questions like, are you going to talk to me again? Ask me the type of flights that they are there, how a cabin crew should look like, all this. I'm like, no, we're done. And I was told to go to another room. So I was in that room. At first, I found only one gentleman. I sat there and I started talking to the guy. And I was asking, so how many questions have you asked? The guy I was like, oh, almost 10. What are you asked? Oh, okay. So I'm comparing those. I'm wondering, like, are these people bringing me here as a trick or am I actually going to move to the next level? So after about three hours of sitting in the next room, people are, some people are getting in, some people are not getting in. You'd hear that they, they need to go home or something of the sort. When he got into, when uh, an interviewer came, guess who came? The security guard who was rude, you remember the second one? Is one who came in and he was like, oh, Japheth, whoever, Sandro Gino, ABCD, ABCD, you guys are the ones who have actually proceeded. I would like to see her tomorrow. And I remember my teacher, and I remember I just went out of the room. I went to the washroom and I called my teacher and I told her, oh my God, what you said was true. Do you know? And I kept on telling her the story. And I remember my teacher was laughing and she was telling me, I'm sure you were, at, at some point, you were provoked and you were almost going to say something stupid. And I was like, yeah, I, I was. My, that's a police job. Because you always overlook some people. You always think, ah, this person cannot help me with anything. So it actually taught me a very valuable lesson. Even when working in the aviation industry, that's one thing I've always tried in me. Even right now, I say hi to, I make it my business to know the people who I work with, the building that I am working at the neighboring building, the security and all that, like I make it my business because you never know who you act, you can actually help in life. So yes, there's a loving relationship. That's an example of a loving relationship, but now to someone else. And then the parenting. Parenting, I feel like it's very important because the first place that a child would actually would actually uh, learn from is a parent. If you keep on telling your child how stupid they are or how clever they are, that's what they're going to take home. That's what they're going to always carry in their minds. That's what they're always going to live with. So I feel like as parents, we should genuinely help our children grow. We should genuinely speak words of affirmations to our children. We should genuinely speak uh, blessings to our children. We should teach our children to be positive. Yes, life has negativity and all that, but 
if we teach them at a young age, they won't always see the bad only. They'll always want to see the silver lining. And even if it's not that, sometimes when something bad happens, they would actually say, um, okay, fine, something bad has happened, but thank God I'm still okay. You know, like it, it would actually help the child if you are positive, if you speak words, because as I said before, your words become your world. Then there is social, your social life. Um, how you speak to your friends, how you speak to your coworkers matters a lot. Uh, it actually helps you to just, like if you have a, a social person who you look up to, like for me, my social person was Oprah, because I used to think Oprah has 11,000 friends. The way she's so, she's the most popular person, and the way she has a whole talk show, she has everyone. But I came to learn that Oprah has a very small circle. She has a very small circle of people whom she, who she actually socializes with at a depth, a certain depth in her life. So I learned that um, your circle should be small, or even if it's big, uh, make sure that the people you have around you can actually help you grow, not can actually uh, drain the life out of you. So you should have a picture for that. And then your career, where do you see yourself in the next two, three years? I wouldn't say five years anymore because Corona has taught us to live in the moment, number one. Number two, uh, with the new strengths that are coming up, it is always best to just look at the next two, three years, okay? So career-wise, where do I want to be? If I'm, an, if I'm a manager, uh, how far up the ladder do I want to go? Or uh, can, I do, can I do something different? Can I be able to earn a living in another way or the other. Because according to, according to society, they think that you should have only one career. From when you turn 18 or maybe 21, you should have it that one stable job till when you're going to go and maybe retire, if you want to retire. But five careers before the age of 65. Five careers. I've been an aviator. I've been an interior designer. I'm an event organizer. I'm a marketer and a model. And it doesn't stop there. Life is long, life is beautiful, and you can add if you can be able to uh, manage everything that you're doing. And then, uh, Number 10, financial. As I said before, I had a problem with my finances. I knew that was the one thing. If I want to leave something, if I want to leave a legacy for my family, I have to build right now so that I can at least I can leave something substantial for my children. And I remember I was taught how to save and how to live within your means. This day, social media image the Ikidanganya Watoto. In Ashinda Ikidamanya, everyone do it. Someone can take a picture that they've gone to Kempiski and maybe they just went there to have a cup of tea, which is okay. A hundred percent. I'm not saying that you should not go to Kempiski to have tea, but don't act as if that is your everyday life. Like, live within your means. Me, I've had friends who have gone bankrupt, they have literally moved back to their parents' house because. They are trying to live according to society of Akina Vera Sidika, Puda Monroe, Zari. And I was telling them, these people are older. These people have been working or whatever jobs they're doing, you should not compare yourself to them, number one. Number two, you don't know where they get their money. Leave them be. You work with what you have. Work with what you have and live within your means. Even if you get 5,000 shillings, you can find a way of still saving. The beauty of right now is we have Mshwari. Mshwari can actually help you save even more because if you decide, okay, it's January and I'll be saving this day 100 shillings per day plan or no, week. Yes, 100 shillings. No, 100 shillings a day which will total to about 6,000 shillings within the whole year. Or you can do 
the ones who are handed chilies every day. That may prove a bit difficult, but imagine every week you're removing 500 chilies without squeezing. No, actually not 500 chilies. Around 1,200 chilies a week. Without stopping, it can actually get you good money. And if you decide this, this money, I'm going to put it towards, um, maybe if I've always wanted to buy, I've always had a passion for fashion. I will, and I saw a very good sewing machine. I couldn't afford it at that time. If you start saving right now, it can reach a point in your life that you'll be like, okay, fine, you buy the sewing machine. You even buy something more, even the table. You even buy a few material pieces. You buy your scissors, you buy your thread, you buy all those things. Like It can help you financially. Like You'd stop thinking like as if you're in a box and you think like out of the box, basically. So you should have a picture of finances, how you want your finances to be, how much you want to also get is very important because I feel like if you don't have the exact amount of money that you want to get, you are not really seeing it in the, you're not really having a tunnel view of what you actually want to get. Then there is the quality of life. What quality of life do you want to have? I have, my sister used to work with a gentleman. Unfortunately, he passed away. But uh, this gentleman has been working with my sister for the last 15 years in the airport. And I remember the gentleman has, I, I, I remember my sister had moved from, she used to live in Donholm. She moved from Donholm, she went to Feather. And she moved from Feather and she went to like in her own house in Utawala. And during that whole time, this gentleman has been living in, in, in uh, Kibera the whole time. And one day they had a trauma. So they go to this guest house. And I took on Lady Saba. I don't know if some of you have actually gone to Kibera, like number, number Saba. But if you know number Saba, you know exactly how that place looks like. And she just called the gentleman and said, and she asked the gentleman, what do you do with your salary? Why would you live in a place like this? And the gentleman was like, do you know how much money I get by living here? And I still wondering, what do you mean how much money? Are you being paid to actually live here or what is happening? The next one told him, you know how much money we get from the health organizations like the USAID and who's and whatever. And I thought, if you're blessed, Get blessed, like move on in life because you will miss out on blessings. Because I believe the way a, a God gives you a child and he brings blessings to the child is the same way when God elevates you, he brings you more and more and more blessings. Because honestly speaking, if you decide to stay in that cocoon of yours, you will never move from that quality of life. Even the people who are actually the Egyptians, they were told, you know what? If you want like to get food, your manna, you have to get out of your house because manna will not get into your house for you to be able to get it. So you have to get out to be able to get food and to get and to like get a source of income. So our quality of life will be, for us to get out to improve our quality of life basically. And also you should have a picture of where you want to be. If you want to have a two bedroom house. We all don't have the same quality. Like Cleophas Malala, the ex-senator of Kakamega County, he built a house worth 200 million Kenya shillings, 12 bedroom. I would not personally want to live in a 12 bedroom house because Lord, I would not live by myself. I won't lie to you. I would want to have like my whole family and I, I have a huge family. I would want all of them to be there so that I can be able to enjoy that. But some someone would want like a one bedroom apartment. Some other person would want like a bungalow, four bedroom. Another person would want maybe a piece of land. Our quality of life is different. Our taste of life is different. But make sure you have a picture of what you're going to get. Okay. Then the last one is your life vision. What do you mean by your life vision? Where do you see yourself ending up? Where would you want, if God maybe asked you today, Sandra, how long do you want to live in the world? What would you want to, oh, okay, fine. 
what would you where would you want to have your life vision what would you want to do for me i've always wanted to be a philanthropist at the end of it all like i am working towards generational wealth and then philanthropy i want to give back i've always been very passionate about giving back also that's why i do also the the vision book and apart from the vision book i also do um books for students because i feel like if we start teaching students how to do these things when they're still in school imagine how amazing or how different their life would be as compared to for me my life because i started getting serious with the writing the vision down in these specific areas of my life and actually having pictures to all of them after i'd gone through my depression before that yes i would have okay i wanted those pairs of shoes i would get those pairs of shoes i wanted to have a car i would save up i knew how much money i would i would go and look at the a car bazaar and decide i want to have a vit how much is the vit 1.2 million how much is the cheapest vit i can actually get that actually looks good second hand i can get it at 700000 i can get it at 680 depending on who you're buying it from so you go you do your window shopping you decide on what you want to get apart from all that those i feel like are a bit too small for your life vision because anyway I wouldn't say it's a bit too small because I feel like everyone has a different uh, taste to life. I might want a Mercedes, but someone else might want a G wagon. Someone else might want a Hummer. So it all depends on one person's life vision or where you want to get to life. I had a friend who was very passionate about being a pastor. I remember when she was in class, you so she always wanted to just preach the word of god and at some point i was looking at her and i was wondering you want to be a past, like of all the things in your life you want to be a pastor not even a pilot not even a like a pastor and she said she wants had a dream and she saw herself standing on the world like the globe she was standing on top of it and when i had that that is I I I told her I feel like that's your life vision because you'll have to go through the the steps of actually getting to that point so start when you get out of here go to a seminary actually like learn get to that point serve dedicate your life to God A B C D and actually work towards it and the most amazing thing is that I met this lady no I actually met a friend of mine who gave me a flyer of the lady my friend she was one of the people who were actually being advertised as the people who are going to be the key speakers in another crusade she hadn't become a pastor yet but she was an evangelist at that time so i was like oh that's amazing like and so you need to sit down with yourself write down exactly what you want write down parts of it first of all write them down in a piece of paper right uh intellectually like which books you can go online this is the the most amazing thing if you can't read if you have a problem reading rather you can go and on youtube and you can get like uh audios if uh maybe you'd love to read you can you can get ebooks this is that's the beauty of it like you don't have to have like a physical physical book you can get an ebook and then uh have a picture of the book that you want to read have a picture of the of your life vision have a picture of your health and wealth fitness like if maybe you have a one pack and you want to get maybe a flatter tummy doesn't necessarily you have to be a six pack as i said everyone has different tastes uh just know what to change about your lifestyle maybe it's your eating habits maybe it's uh the fact that you drive every day to work sometimes leave the car in the house Three times out of a week, you can be going via matatu because that movement, that uh, your heart palpitating, palpitating, and uh, you may be running from one state to the other helps you. Maybe you can decide, okay, I won't leave my car, but I'll be taking the staircase as opposed to just taking the lift every day. So some small things can actually add up to something amazing. But just show like uh, how you'd like to look like. You can actually have someone else's face on you on the. picture of the fitness and health and just to show you where you want to be maybe you are suffering from uh for me i was suffering from eczema 
from when I was very small. And I remember at during that time, my mother had a big problem just finding something which would actually just clear my skin. So for us, we went to a dermatologist, but it actually worked well for us. So if you have a vision, if you have um if you have a taste, if you have an outcome of how you want your body to look like, how you want uh your career to look like, where you want to be, maybe which car you want to get, which house you want to live in, I feel like it will be much easier. And just to finish up, this was my vision board. It doesn't have to be big, it can be something small. And that's why I started the vision book. Noel, can you kindly read me the question, please? The first question is, what drives you to have a positive energy even when you're facing storms? I have this urge of making my sister, first of all, my younger sister. I take care of my younger sister. So if I don't take care of her, she will be on my neck, number one. <laughs> number two, I love the good life. I won't lie to you. I love the good life. The good life does not come for free. So I have to get out and actually go and make it. But most of it all, I pray to God. I pray. Prayer moves mountains. Uh -huh. um, leaders at Bonn or Med, you have a gift for public speaking. Is it in Bonn or through training? Odiambo Olale had to ask that question. Uh, in Bonn. This is 100% in Bonn. I've not gone through any training. As I told you before, uh, I was when I was young, I was quite shy. I'm a, I'm born in a family of six children. I'm the second last one, and my sisters are very opinionated, very. So if I wanted peace, I wanted to be quiet and sit in my own space. But when they moved out of the house, and now I was left to do everything for myself. I saw the way they were growing up. When my soul is wanted something, like when she wanted to actually just get her first car, I remember she would actually buy bread. Sorry, I and didn't she, understand. She would actually buy bread and she would apply peanut butter and tie that for lunch and plus juice so that she wouldn't actually go and buy chip or pilau or whatever amount of for a certain amount of money so that she can actually save every coin. And she would leave the house earlier than she was supposed to, and then leave work later so that she can actually save on fair. So the smallest things could actually uh, help her. So I saw that, I saw my brother also doing the same thing. I saw my mother, how hard she worked. And it naturally just helped me to be a leader by myself. Like, And I remember, when I wanted to do something, you had to ask my mother. And my mother would not go when crawling. If you go ask something when you're crawling, my mother would not give you permission. You had to be bold. So yes, you had it is inbuilt. But she had helped me just get it out. OK, thank you. So Aloysius is, is requesting if you can share with us your vision board on WhatsApp. OK, I will. She'll send it to me, and then I will share it on the group. Any other question? Okay, sorry guys, I have eaten one minute of your time. I just request you to give me four minutes. I promise by age 20 will be done. Apologies. Um, <laughs> also, um, I would advise everyone also, please, anything you want to do, please put a date to me so that it can actually give you the urge of doing it more and more because when you, it's like, the way you can have uh, sand in a, in a time glass and it's, it's actually ending, you'd be like, oh my God, this thing is actually has to be done within a certain amount of time. So have goals to whatever you're doing and push yourself. You cannot break, you'll only become stronger. You're like tea bags. The more you sit in hot water, the stronger you become. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Now guys, remember, 
we always think in pictures. If I tell you um, a tall, handsome, black guy, it's not the words that are going to stick. It is the image. You will create an image for that person that you're calling the tall, dark, and handsome guy. <laughs> so we have ses these sessions every Monday, same time, from 7.15 a.m. to 8.15 a.m., but you can join as early as 7 a.m. just to come and network and to know other people and to let other people know you. You never know. Your next million might be coming from one of these people here. You just never know. What you're searching, the, the, the answer to your prayer might be with one of the people that you're going to interact with before between 7 a.m. and quarter past seven. Yes, Sandra? One more, two more things, actually. Uh, quote. What you seek is seeking you. And then dress the way you want to be addressed. I'm done. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, guys.